What's up everybody, welcome back to part eight of our golf cart build. And we are now down to our third piece of cardboard. Um, fortunately, my OCD doesn't allow me to like have a giant piece of cardboard all the stuff crossed out on it, it drives me insane. Uh, and I'm constantly finding new stuff to add to our list. And hopefully we're gonna cover most of these things in this episode. So just kind of looking through, I'm still waiting on a bunch of parts, but uh, hopefully I wanna get the carburetor rejet, we need to weld up the uh, engine mounts, we need to weld up a chain guard, we need to bleed the brakes again, and then just start kind of getting the body on, because uh, once that kind of ball gets rolling, uh, once, once all the drivetrain stuff is done, I like to get the body on it, I like to get this thing around the block, it'd be dope to actually be able to drive it. The other cool thing I figured out was, um, at the end of the last video, I was having a lot of trouble getting it into neutral, and I was like, God damn it, why can't I find neutral? All of a sudden, you know, I thought there was something wrong with my shift linkage, I'm like measuring stuff, I'm trying to figure it out. Turns out, you actually go forward to downshift and back to upshift. Uh, and I thought it was backwards, and so I was like, ah, oh, god damn it, I'm trying to find neutral between fifth and sixth gear. Doesn't work. So, when you're building stuff like this, pay attention to which way the shifter goes, because it's important. Um, but yeah, this is, this is kind of our final list. I know it looks like a lot still, but uh, we should be able to get through it pretty quick. So, stay tuned. Okay, so what I did was I went underneath and welded all the seams. So now our motor is not going to move anywhere. And then we went in and put this in. This is just uh, some mild steel plate. And this is just a safety device in case this chain lets go or comes off a runner or whatever. And it's just welded to this unused uh, motor mount. That way we can remove this whole thing. It's just a bolt right there. It's easy to reach from underneath. And basically this just is designed to protect everybody involved. I also figured out the the, the hard starting and the bad, poor running issue is actually this fuel pump moves way too much fluid and there's no kind of pressure regulator so it's actually forcing an abnormal amount of gasoline in so I flooded the engine so I gotta let that clear all out um, but we're gonna have to figure out something else um, because this is really designed to use a gravity fed system and one thing I had tried to avoid before was mounting it uh, up under here but we may be forced to put the gas tank somewhere back over here. Um, and the reason for that is that would allow us to actually gravity feed down into it. Um, it's not really my, my favorite choice because then I got to cut out something in the body to make filling gas easier and all this other nonsense. And I really like the placement, but uh, the fuel pump just moves too much fuel. So this is what we did for our um, turn signal switch. And so you can turn it one way, turn it the other way. Um, and then these wires are our power distribution wires. We've got this little block down here, which is what's the blinker relay. And then what it was in the back, I actually mounted them into the frame. These are these super bright little tiny LEDs. They're really cool. I really like them. Um, basically, there's one mounted in each corner of the frame. Then in the front, we're going to have to mount them in the, um, in the body itself. So I haven't done that yet, but I'll be able to just jumper everything in up here. But if we turn this on, um, you can see it's a pretty decently bright LED. Now in every project you make a mistake and I'm more than man enough to admit my mistakes. So here's where we're fucked up. If you guys remember right in here there used to be a gas tank with some cool aluminum brackets I made and a fuel pump and whatever. And the fuel pump that I bought, <clears throat> this guy right here, supposed to be pressure regulated. It said for carburetors. And I just kind of assumed that carburetors was like a generic pressure, right? It was ready for like I don't know, 6 PSI or something, or 5 PSI. Long story short, it's way too much volume, uh, or pressure really, um, for our little carburetor to handle. And so the reason the engine was running like crap and getting flooded out was because it was literally pumping gas past the seat of the needle on the main jet, just drowning the engine in gasoline to the point where like, I would crank it over for a few minutes and I'd pull the spark plug and just get sprays of gasoline coming out of it. Well, whatever, man. Live and learn, right? It's not a big deal. <clears throat> so, here's where we're at. Um, as you can see, this is just zip tied in. Um, we're going, next thing I gotta do is I gotta build some brackets to hold this in place. But I just ran it, and so basically all we're doing is we're having a gravity feed. You can see it fires up completely cold like a champ because I had this thing running really well before we pulled everything apart uh, and the other thing I did was I went and took the jets out of the old carburetor and put them in the new carburetor um, and that's another reason why this thing's running a hell of a lot better okay so here's our revised fuel system 
Just bent up some aluminum brackets. There's actually holes here if you remember, so to make the screws kind of odd. But you know, the gas tank's not going anywhere. It's nicely fixated. It's not going to vibrate too much. Um, and once we fill it up with gas, it'll just drain down here into the carburetor. And all of that's in good operational order. Okay, next little bit is we got our little block off plate in. Uh, and of course that big rubber mat's gonna go down over all of this. That's so gonna help with sound editing and stuff. But this is just extra little thing to keep uh, dirt and grit and stuff out as much as we can. All right, next thing we did was we installed this brake switch here. I wanted to mount it underneath, but there's just no clever way of doing it. And basically when you push down the pedal, it pulls down the switch, connects the circuit, and eventually we're gonna wire that into our brake lights um, once we get uh, our body on. Unfortunately, I'm still waiting um, for some of the pieces I need to do that, but I like it, man. It's really good coming together. All right, let me catch you up on the last little things we've done. Uh, mostly just bolting stuff together. I didn't want you guys to sit and watch through that, but our rear LED turn signals are in, our roof is in, our seat backs are in, our um, just floor mat is in. All of that's been cut, so we got nice airflow going there. We got our shifter, got our cables tucked up, got the front end in, um, got the LED lights in. Eh, they're pretty good. Um, let's see. Horn works. Um, let me see if I can reach over here. And there's our LED lights. They're thirty fucking dollars. They're not very bright, but hey, that, it is what I got, and that's what I got. So. Anyway, um, that's pretty much it. The build is done. Uh, there will be one more video in which uh, we're going to go and drive around in this thing and review it. Uh, and there's definitely some big surprises uh, in terms of how it handles, um, but all that will be in the next video. Um, so stay tuned. As always, I'm Max. This is MaxWorks. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you like the channel, please subscribe. Peace.